Hello, and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Today's organist is Linda Margetts, and I'm your host, Luke Howard. Let's get things going with the jaunty prelude in classic style by American composer and organist Gordon Young. Even though it was published in 1966, this prelude sounds somewhat more ancient than that. Young intentionally imitated some of the characteristic traits of 18th century music, the chugging rhythms, harmonic progressions, and the final cadence, to make this charming organ work a timeless tribute to a past age. That's what makes it classic. Three German melodies now. We'll begin with the old chorale Schmücke dich, O liebe Seele, a Lutheran hymn tune reimagined as an organ fantasia by Karl Piotti and published in 1900. Piotti was a prolific arranger of chorale tunes with more than 200 published organ preludes. He also happens to have worked as organist at the Thomaskirche in Leipzig, where Bach had worked as Kapellmeister 150 years earlier. Then Linda will play Johann Walter's chorale prelude on Lobe den Herren, den mächtigen König der Ehren. Like Piotti, Walter also wrote more than 200 organ works based on chorale tunes. Walter was actually a distant relative of J.S. Bach and was a prolific copyist of Bach's organ music, a vitally important legacy that he left for later generations. Piotti first, then Johann Walter. Thank you. 
The third German melody on Linda's program is probably the best known. It's J.S. Bach's Sheep May Safely Graze from the so-called hunting cantata, Was mir behagt ist nur die Muntrejagd. It's one of only a few dozen secular cantatas Bach wrote during his career. And yet this melody, not quite a hymn tune or a chorale, was written for lyrics that can be thought to allude to a good shepherd. We'll hear it now in an arrangement by today's organist, Linda Margots, and then she'll play her own arrangement of the Latter-day Saint hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints.
The hymn, God is Love, is also sometimes known by its first line, Earth with her 10,000 flowers. But I think that first title is more appropriate and meaningful. The words, God is Love, conclude each of the hymn's three verses, which declare that earth and heaven, sea and sky, flora and fauna, all have the same message to share. God is love. These words were penned by Thomas Rawson Taylor, the son of a congregational minister and, for a short time at least, a minister himself in Sheffield, England. Poor health compelled him to resign that post, as well as his subsequent work as a classics tutor, and Taylor died in 1835 at the tragically young age of only 27. The belief that nature bears witness of God was not original to Thomas Taylor, of course. 1400 years earlier, St. Augustine wrote in his Confessions that if nature's wonders could speak to our hearing ears, they would say, we did not create ourselves, but were created by him who abides forever. And Augustine was undoubtedly familiar with the Psalms of David, which affirm that the heavens declare the glory of God. King David, St. Augustine, and Thomas Taylor were simply verbalizing the belief of many of the faithful over the centuries. They see real evidence of God's handiwork in the beauty and sublime splendor of this earth's natural environments, which, as Taylor's hymn reminds us, bear record in one whispering chorus that God is love. That we have Thomas Taylor's sweet hymn at all is a bit of a miracle. It was published in Philadelphia without attribution in 1830, a full six years before it appeared posthumously in England as part of Taylor's memoirs. That means that he must have penned this poem while still a student, possibly even a teenager, and it somehow made its way across the Atlantic. It was reprinted in Latter-day Saint publications as early as 1832 and included in the very first Latter-day Saint hymnal of 1835. We'll hear the musical setting of God is Love, composed by Thomas Griggs especially for the Tabernacle Choir and published in 1883. It's arranged by today's organist, Linda Margots.
By the 1930s, William Walton had softened his early experimental edge and was considered within the accepted establishment tradition. And that would prove significant for the final work on today's program. With the death of King George V in 1936, Edward VIII acceded to the throne and a new coronation march was needed. Unfortunately, Edward Elgar, the master of such music, had died in 1934, and the next most famous English composer, Ray Fawn Williams, didn't really care to write music like that. Walton was proposed as someone who could write a new march to equal Elgar's. But by the time the BBC had formally commissioned Walton to compose it, Edward had abdicated, and the march was commissioned for the coronation of George VI in 1937. It's the Crown Imperial March, arranged for organ by Herbert Murrell.
We're so glad you joined us for this episode of Piping Up featuring organist Linda Margetts. Thank you for watching. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping up, organ concerts at Temple Square streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.